Alrighty, time for a four on four draft here in the cube streets where we've opened up Black Lotus. Oh, you love to see it. It's myself, Mati, Eomatic, and Max Smith battling against Falcon Eye, the real LSV, Luis Salvado, Slade, and Terabad. Worthy opponents, one and all. We're uh, getting passed to by Falcon Eye, passing to Salvado, and yeah, slamming Black Lotus. Oh, this is such a good pack for me. No complaint equity this time, because not only am I first picking Black Lotus, which is obviously fantastic, arguably the best card. I still have Time Walk slightly above it, but honestly, Soul Ring, Time Walk, Lotus, you cannot go wrong. <laughs> and Salvado's second pick is going to be what? Fiery Confluence? <laughs> this pack is trash aside from Lotus. That's, that's, that's the way you do it in a team draft. All right, so after first picking Black Lotus, what am I trying to do? Well, there's a lot of different ways to go. You want good, powerful 4, 5, and 6 mana plays because lotusing out like a 4-drop, like a Minskin Boo style card or a turn 3 Grave Titan can be very good. Very good with combo. Underworld Breach and Yogwill are both very good with Lotus. Uh, good in the artifact decks. I mean, you really can't go wrong with it, but you do kind of want to stay away from Omnath, Leovold type cards. They don't do too well. This pack's also pretty weak. There's a Pentad Prism, a Sheldock Isle, a Mother of Rune Season Pyromancer, I'm leaning towards just taking Sheldock Isle. I've been pretty impressed with this card in general. It's such a low opportunity cost and such a high upside. Sometimes this casts like a six mana card for effectively two mana and the card itself is free. Plus you got card selection when you played it. So gonna take Sheldock over Pyro. This is less committal and I think just better. Pendant Prism is also pretty good, but happy enough with a Sheldock here. I think Salvato Unless Salvato first picked a card that isn't very good with Fiery Confluence, there's a pretty good chance that his second pick was Confluence, and then third pick will be Seasoned Pyromancer, just to keep that in mind. This pack has Reckoner Bankbuster, which I do like. Ooh, a new one, Sir Ginger the Meal Ender. Two mana, three one, but as long as the opponent has a Planeswalker, also has Trample, Hexproof, and Haste, and whenever one of your artifacts dies, uh, it gets a plus plus one counter and scry one plus, you can sack it to gain some life, so... Solid card. Ren and Six, also pretty good. Upheaval's pretty nice. Upheaval Lotus is a combo, but maybe not as big of a combo as like Upheaval Mana Crypt, because the Lotus gets used up and doesn't like get bounced. It's not quite as good as the other zero mana cards. Upheaval of Sheldock's a very good combo, though. If you can put Upheaval under a Sheldock, you almost always just win, because a two mana Upheaval is really, really easy to recover from. Um, also, an Upheaval on their end step can be pretty sick, too. I think I am going to take the Upheaval. It just works well in the kinds of decks I like to draft with Lotus here. And really the other cards aren't not, aren't that impressive. All right, here we've got Venser and Fire Ice, Breeding Pool. I think Breeding Pool is the best land. So that rules out Jetmere's Garden, Seacrum Coast, and Mana Confluence because a blue-green land is pretty good, especially since Upheaval does make me want Fast Bond, Exploration, that sort of thing. Fire Ice is just a very solid card. You really never go wrong taking that card. It's always going to be useful. Venser is kind of similar. I, have, I think I like Fire Ice a little more than Venser. And then there's also, I guess, Life Death and Questing Beast are both solid cards. I kind of just want to take Breeding Pool, though. It feels like with Upheaval, I'm pretty likely to, to be in a place where Breeding Pool is good. Oh, Dark Ritual actually is very appealing. This pack's not that good. And... Having Dark Ritual plus Black Lotus means that now Yogwill, which is a card that you can generally get kind of late, just becomes unbelievable. So I'm going to take Dark Ritual here. I also think it's maybe the second best card in the pack, depending on where you rate Thalia. Obviously, I'm not going to take Thalia, but passing Thalia. Though Salvato, I don't think, is in the best place to maybe use it. It's possible Salvato went down a path that involved taking the Mother Runes out of my second pack and then takes the Thalia, but... I'm happy enough taking Dark Ritual here, and yeah, still still seeing where we're going, but I like this start. I like this start a lot. Obviously, Fast Bond Exploration would be pretty valuable, and General Blue cards would be pretty good. I'm fairly sure I'm going to want Blue. I would love to see like a six-pick Yogwill or something where I don't have to waste like too high of a pick on it, but still very good. Okay, this pack's kind of weak, for me at least. Vorinclex is funny, but I don't really think it's a card I want. Hydra Crisis is okay, but it's not actually that good with Lotus and Ritual. 
I think you can do better. This is better when you have like Tolarian Academy style, like permanent mana sources, because it lets you use those mana sources for all the cards you draw. Using up all your temp mana on a Krasis doesn't put you in the best position. I do like, uh, Terabad's gonna be back in a second, I'm sure. I do like Agatha's Soul Cauldron in some decks, but it, that's a kind of narrow card, and this does not so far look like a deck that can use it. I just have no creatures of any kind. I'm leaning towards Mosswood Dread Knight, because it's just, a decent value card. I'm not really loving the prospect, but I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think most of these cards are that impressive. I mean, I guess Hydrate Crisis might be okay. I think that I'd rather have the like small ball card that can build up to these big plays and not Crisis, which I think is less of a, less of a strong card early and more of a strong card late with upheaval. I'm already feeling like my late game has has a re one really big card. You don't necessarily need a ton more than that, though I would play more if they were powerful enough. Like something like Time Spiral is a little more what I'm looking for. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Moss with Dread Knight. I I could see taking Splinter Twin, I guess, but I think Dread Knight's fine. Oh, there's Yogwell slamming it. Get not close to passing it for Waterlog Grove or Blood Crypt. I do like Sail into the West, but now that I have Ritual Lotus Yogwill. Any sort of storm card, like a Tendrils, which is a card you could easily get 8th or 10th or whatever. Well, I can't get a 10th here because I didn't open it. But Tendrils is a card very few people at the table want. And Yogwill is uh, the perfect way to kind of enable that. So I like that. That's a good pickup. Let's see if we can get more stormy cards. The other thing is you could be like Sultai Ramp and then have Yogwill as a finisher. Mosswood Dread Knight works kind of nicely for that. Okay, this pack has Teferi, which is good. A bunch of red cards I don't want. Slaver, which is good, but doesn't look like a Slaver deck. I think I'm gonna take Grist. Grist is a fantastic card just on its own. You just cast Grist and it does good work. It's actually pretty good with Yogwill just filling your graveyard. And I think I like Grist more than Maelstrom Pulse. Maelstrom Pulse, I guess, is a spell that goes to your graveyard for Yogwill, but Grist is just so much stronger, so. I'll take Grist. It's not really like the storm combo card I'm dreaming of, but I think it's a solid card. Happy enough with the breeding pool pick here, given the way things have gone. And yeah, we'll see how the pack rounds out. I don't think we're going to get back like Pentad Prism or anything. Yeah, a bunch of white cards. Wow. <laughs> Literally six white cards. Uh, what is the white card I'm most likely to play? Sarah Paragon is a combo with Lotus, but this doesn't look like a Sarah Paragon deck. Um, I guess Leyline Binding is a card I could potentially splash. I kind of just want to hate Containment Priest because it's the best card at the pack. I don't know. It's kind of a weak pack. Oh, Regrowth isn't bad. It's not really a combo with Yogwill, but Regrowth Lotus is good. I like having a little redundancy in case you mill the Yogwill. I think Regrowth's fine. Timeless Dragon is a very good card also. I've actually been kind of impressed by that card, but... I'm not really in a position to use it. I don't care so much about passing it. There's also Beaumont, which is a little red aggro card, and then Imperial Recruiter, which is a fine red value card. But I like uh, I like just taking Regrowth there. <laughs> I'm mostly black green, which is funny. Um, Endurance isn't very good for me, but it'd be good against Yogwild. How much do I care about that? I might just take the Oliphant. I think that's the best card in the pack, especially after passing a bunch of good red. Though maybe I would play Endurance. I guess Oliphant's not that good, and Endurance is a card I could easily play. Oh, I like Mana Confluence, I think, more than Red, Green, White. Mana Confluence is a solid card, especially if you end up being three colors. And, oh, Mana Morphos Wield. That is nice. I like Escape well enough, but Yogwill with Mana Morphos is fantastic. It also, like, can make Dark Ritual into the right colors. You can really set up a good Storm Kill with it very easily, so... That is a is a welcome gift. I didn't really anticipate Manamorphose coming back. And green seems very open. I've gotten some decent green cards out of this pack. I might put Endurance in the kind of the sideboard area because I don't think I'm that likely to play it. Uh, I guess I'll take Knight. I don't I don't think I'm going to play either of those. I'm not going to play Woe Strider. All right. Very good pack one. Still could use a Storm win condition here. 
Oh, and there's a Mana Crypt? It's also Mana Drain and Archon, but Mana Crypt, now this upheaval is just popping off. And we opened Lotus Mana Crypt. Absolutely zero complaints at this point. <laughs> All right. Slamming that and looking for... Let's see, what's going to wheel here? Authority, Drain, Click, Foothills is four. Archon's five. Chart six. And then someone's going to take either Wandering Emperor, Torsten, or Talisman. Tamio might come back here. Wouldn't be unhappy if that were the case. This looks like a pretty decent Tamio deck. Oh, and there's a Shieldred? Okay, I'm into Shieldred. This deck is absolutely going to play draw sevens if I can find them. And now that I have Lotus Mana Crypt, any draw sevens, we've already passed up on Sale. We haven't seen Wheel of Fortune, Time Twister, or Time Spiral, or Echo Beyonds, four different ones. You don't see some of those too late, like Time Spiral, you don't usually get fifth pick, so those could have been taken already, but... Still, on the table is a bunch of those. And yeah, we're easily taking Shieldred, passing up a Skyclave. Lorien Revealed would be nice here. Portal, Seeker's Chariot. I guess I, would, I wouldn't mind Wheeling Blooming Marsh. It seems pretty doable, but yeah, easy Shieldred here. And I'm going to see what we can get in terms of draw sevens. Though Upheaval's a pretty good finisher. Yeah, I don't really think any of these is making the cut, but we'll see. Regrowth also means that endurance is a lot less needed. I do like having a little backup in terms of uh, getting to regrowth something, but for the time being, I think just having regrowth in Yogwil is going to be plenty. I just kind of like to protect against Grist randomly milling here. So let's see. Alrighty, had to step away for a second, had an emergency come up, all good, and I picked up a Mind Twist, a Chrome Host Seed Shark, a City of Traders, and an Eternal Witness. So, what do we want next, Sakura Tribe Elder or Spell Pierce? suppose there's Sneak Attack too. I'm going to take Sakura Tribe Elder. I think Tribe Elder looks pretty good in this style of deck. Ooh, I don't think we're an Oath of Druids deck, given how many creatures we have. Kind of curious about Restless Cottage. Heartbeat of Spring can be good with upheaval, but I have no untap effects. And I think the Urtai Resurrect is also pretty good here. I guess I could use more lands, and Restless Cottage is a very good land, so just take that. Tamio did indeed come back. So did Torsten Wandering Emperor. I already have Eternal Witness and Regrowth, which makes Tamio a lot less appealing. Do I want red-green talisman? That's not the most enticing talisman in the world. I guess Tamiyo can still be solid. It also sets up Yogwil kind of nicely. All right, because it mills the cards. And then here, oh, Sahili is going to be nice. I don't know what my color situation is going to look like, but one thing that's really good with Sahili is you go Sahili, play Lotus or Mana Crypt, turn the token into those, and it just generates a ton of mana. Passing a late Unholy Heat, but I think that's okay. Ooh, blue-green talisman or peatland? I think I'd rather have the talisman. A double on-color talisman is pretty nice, and ramping to upheaval is pretty good. Am I going to play a green-white sack land? So it's basically a forest I can sack. I'm not going to play Omnath. I don't care about passing Omnath or Condemn. I'm just kind of deciding if I want to just hate the Sacred Foundry. I think I do. I don't think I'm going to play a green-white land. Okay, Kaito or Deadly Dispute. I'm not playing Archfiend. That's not really what this deck's trying to do. I think Kaito. I don't think I'm that into Deadly Dispute in this deck. I think I'm a little more likely to want Kaito, and then I guess I'll take Bitter Reunion because I don't think Spike Feeder does much. Last Brick Brazen Bar. All right. I will take that. Let's see what we can open pack three. We've uh, really outdone ourselves already, so I'm not too worried about what we get pack three here. And not counting these cards, we're at 21 lands right now, so that's... Got plenty of playables here. <laughs> Ancestral Handlock Sapphire. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Open one too many pieces of power. I've got to take Ancestral here. I, I actually generally think Mock Sapphire is better. And certainly with like Upheaval, Mox is really good. Also, it kind of sucks that Salvato is going to get to take the Mox and play it no matter what colors he is. Though he would also take Ancestral, just might be a little more awkward. But I think in a deck that has Regrowth, Tamiyo, <laughs> and Eternal Witness, Ancestral Recall looks so good. It's also great with Yogwil. All right, I guess we'll pass on Sapphire here. 
and might get back like Creeping Tar Pit or Restless Vine Stock. I'd be happy with either of those. Oh, there's Time Spiral. Oh man, there's also Urza's Saga. It's going to be one of those two. As much as I like Periodin, I don't like it that much. Urza's Saga getting Lotus or Mana Crypt is pretty messed up. But Time Spiral in a Shieldred deck is also really good. And I have Sheldock Isle to pick it up. And I have a lot of mana generation. Hmm. I kind of think it's still probably Urza Saga. I feel like getting these two artifacts is really good. Urza Saga fits into more decks, like Salvato might not be able to play Time Spiral. And I just pass Salvato on Mox. Yeah, no way I can pass Urza Saga under those circumstances. Take that. And then next pick, wow, there's Exploration and Flooded Strand. I like Exploration. In fact, it looks pretty good in this deck, but I didn't pick up any draw sevens. I do have an Ancestral, I guess, and an Upheaval. I'll still probably just take Flooded Strand. Right now it's a blue-green land, and if I pick up a blue-black land, it could be that. There's also Memory Jar, though. Hold on, hold on. Hmm, maybe it actually is Jar, because Jar Shieldred's busted. I have Acceleration into Jar. <laughs> jar Sahili's kind of funny. You can copy that Jar with the tokens. I also have a, a Witness, some Ramp. Ah, yeah, I'm going to take Memory Jar. I think... Just the fact that you can go cast Jar and then go Shieldred Crack Jar immediately, take 14. Like, that's a pretty strong combo that they, they might not see coming if you just play the Jar. Though, depending on the circumstances, sometimes you play Shieldred first as well. Also, my mana is pretty good here. I have Black Green, Blue Green, and Three Color Land. Talisman, Mana Morphos, Sakura Tribe Builder. So that's feeling pretty good. Oh, and there's Fast Bond. All right, well, we're slamming that. That makes me a little sad about the Time Spiral, but I, I think after passing Salvato on Mox, there's no way I can pass Urza Saga there. All right, we're slamming Fast Bond. And this deck is shaping up to be an all-timer. I actually think Kaito's probably not even good enough. Let's see. This is at 19 land plus Lotus and Mana Crypt, so we've got a couple cuts we can make. I'll put Borrower over here as a spell, but I assume, assume we're going to pick up a few more good ones. This pack's not too impressive. Collector Brutality's fine. I actually do like Cosmic Rebirth. It returns a permanent with mana value three or less onto the battlefield and you gain three life. But you could also target a more expensive permanent just to bring it back to your hand. I might just take Brain Maggot as just a little bit of disruption because I could use it. There's also Ancient Tomb, which is fine. Actually, Ancient Tomb looked kind of good here. I don't know that I'll play City of Traders and Ancient Tomb, but also just not passing Ancient Tomb is, I think, pretty good. Okay, so this pack has Skull Clamp, which doesn't really work in this deck. I guess it's good with Grist. I can fetch it with Urza Saga. It's kind of good with Seed Shark. It's kind of expensive to do that, though, to like make 1-1s one then flip them. I guess I could clamp Brazen Borrower. Oh, I also have Sahili. No, I'm actually talking myself into Skull Clamp. Also, it's the best card. Passing a Walking Ballista is not as big of a deal. All right. Jace would be good in this deck, especially with Ancestral, but I think Skull Clamp is going to be great. Oh, Leovold? Leovold and Shieldred would kind of work at cross purposes, but it's good to have backup. Not that Leovold Memory Jar is really good a, a good combo, because they don't really get Memory Jar value either way. But I might take it just because I don't think a tapped black green land is that impressive. Though the red lead does let it cast Manamorphos. Uh, I'm just going to take Leobold here. Could use another land or two. No land, but I, I do like Virtue of Persistence. I guess I'm never picking up a Tendrils, but I, I kind of feel like I've got some win conditions already. I think I like Virtue more than Stern Scolding, though. Right now I'm at 16 land plus those two, and I'm going to cut a couple cards. Probably don't want City of Traders. That doesn't really count as a card being cut. Could probably cut the Virtue. And this leaves me at 17 land plus those two. I think 17 land is not too bad. Okay, so Creeping Tar Pit and Botanical Sanctum both wield. So did Show and Tell. I'm not really playing any of these red cards. Do I want untapped green, blue, or tapped blue, black that's also a creature land? I kind of feel like having... Two tap lands already me makes me want just the untapped land. Untapped green when you have fast bond in deck is kind of nice. This deck is going to have two colorless lands in it. So that that is one thing that makes me want like slightly more, uh, a slightly higher land count alongside fast bond. Now, only if time spiral wield. 
<laughs> I don't think that's very likely to happen. So this is 17 lands. Yeah, I could, I could see running this, especially since I have Dark Ritual, Lotus, Mana Crypt, Talisman, and I have Mana Morphos, Ancestral, Mosswood Dread Knight as like cheap card draw. The Mind Twist, I think, was a pretty nice pickup. Just at a deck that has Dark Ritual, Lotus, Mana Crypt. Oh, wow, Preordain Wield? Psh, not looking a gift horse in the mouth. Green Suns for Leo and Grist is kind of nice, but I think Preordain is just too busted. So I'm going to take that. That makes me want to cut a card. Oh, Exploration also Wield? Yeah, I think I'll take that too. I don't think this is a recurring Nightmare deck, unfortunately. Um... I'll take a Tali because it's just the best card. I need to cut a card or two. I'll have to see. It might be Tamio. Tamio does set up Yogwell nicely, but I'm not sure. Oh, Shieldred's Edict as a sideboard card, I think, is better for me than taking Cosmic Rebirth or Mannequin. And then I'll just. Look, Bargain is a good card, but I think Fire Covenant is just too strong to pass. And I don't really need Yogmoth's Bargain. I don't really know if that card is actually good, like just in general. All right, this looks like a sick deck. Let's let's put it together. All righty. So ended up just cutting Mosswood Dread Knight and Brazen Borrower, both fine cards. Also not playing the Endurance or Kaito, just because I wanted to play 17 lands even with the mana artifacts. I feel like with Exploration and Fast Bond in deck, it's kind of nice to have extra mana sources. I have a. Uh, Tamio, Jar, Upheaval, Ancestral, plus uh, Skull Clamp. I have a lot of ways to draw extra cards. Sog is also kind of like a spell, so is Sheldock. End up with two Swamps, four Forests, four Islands. A little light on black mana, but I have Ritual and Lotus to kind of compensate for the double black card. And I don't have that many black cards in total. I just have Shieldred, Mind Twist, Yogwell, Grist, and Leovold. So, plus I have Manamorphos and Sakura Tribe Elder. This deck looks awesome. I opened really well. Got some got some good cards. And uh, round one, I'm playing against Slade here. Um, I'll keep this hand. This hand could use a little bit of action, but with Skull Clamp in hand, any creature is good. Well, any creature that's clampable or either of my Planeswalkers that makes creatures. And of course, I have tons of mana, so something like Memory Jar would also be pretty good, or Tamiyo. I think I'm going to lead with Mana Crypt, Mana Morphos. And I'm going to add Green Black. It's kind of a guess. Basically, I've got Chrome Host, Seed Shark, and Grist are the two cards I'm most likely to want to cast. But I guess I have blue cards like Preordain. Actually, let's go Blue Green. Okay, I missed on both. Play Skull Clamp, pass the turn. And I have black mana. I have, I mean, I just really have everything I need. I just need some some kind of action here. All right, Swamp go. Lost the flip, drew a land. <laughs> uh, I'm going to play the Lotus just because I don't have Storm cards in my deck, and I'm playing against a Swamp, so I'm more likely to get, I don't want to get Hemmed or Mesmeric Fiendid or something. Jace, sure. Okay. Need some action here. I have a million mana on turn one. Okay. I mean, if that's the way this game's going to go, that's the way this game's going to go. I hope Slade's first play after this Jace is like a hand disruption spell. Because that would make things a lot better for me. Okay. Let's see if we can draw any sort of anything. Lost the flip. Okay, Urza Saga with all my artifacts in play, but it gives me Saga tokens. So, so far, <laughs> I've drawn all lands. One has been an Urza Saga, which, especially if it had been a turn earlier, would have been pretty nice, but this still might be good enough to win. I mean, there's a lot of cards I could draw that would win very close to on the spot, like Upheaval, Ancestral. I mean, I guess those wouldn't win straight on the spot, but they'd be very good. Necromancy got discarded. Okay, so you don't have any big creatures. All right, well, let's see if we can win a flip here. Nope. How about how about every turn we lose a flip and draw a land? <laughs> All right, pass the turn here. Thirst, sure. I just don't, I don't think it really makes sense to make a Saga token and equip Skull Clamp. I'd rather not 
just be vulnerable to something like a main phase treachery or whatever. All right. Thirst for discovery. Discarding necromancy kind of implies to me that you've got a, another animate spell in hand, but I guess in tombs being discarded, there, there's time twister. It makes sense you wouldn't want to play it, given I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten mana in play, and you have four. Jace is about to flip here. Discard and chart, of course. Interesting. Mind twist would have also been great, though it's actually kind of a little late for mind twist now. Mesmeric Fiend. Okay, good. I was hoping one of those would eventually show up because obviously my hand is just complete bricks. Okay. And then you can Jace into what? Nothing? All right. Leaving mana up for Re Reckoner Bank Buster or maybe, uh, maybe an instant of some kind. Let's make a token. Draw. Okay, first let's lose our flip. Oh, no, we won the flip. Nice. <laughs> and we still drew a land. <laughs> I don't even think I have anything else to get. I've drawn all three of my uh, cheap artifacts. Right, yeah. All right, well. I have a talisman. Land. Equip this one. And then I'm going to attack Jace here. And I assume getting chumped by Mesmeric Fiend. Oh, tear asunder that. Could have just killed the Urza Saga, but all right. Pass the turn. Can't use Reckoner Bank Buster, which is nice. I guess you can Jace back Terra Sunder and Terra Sunder the other Construct token. Sure, that is fine. And what do I want to draw then? I mean, Grist would be a good draw because I would immediately get to Skull Clamp the Insect. Ancestral would obviously be a great draw. <laughs> so far, my draws have been a Talisman and four land, something like that. Maybe more than that, actually, because I met, cause I had one, two, three, four, I had three land in my opening hand. Yeah, five land and a Talisman. Well, that's how a deck like this can, can lose, for sure. All right. Getting hit by Mesmeric Fiend. Let's. Can, can we get action here? Can win the flip. And then. Oh, there's Grist. Okay, that's a start. Uh, I guess I don't have black mana, so I'll have to tap Mana Confluence for now. Let's go Grist. Plus one. Mill Sahili. Sure. Skull Clamp. Draw two. Okay, now we're talking. Um, I can cast Witness. I've already played a land. I can Witness back Sahili or Urza Saga or Manamorphose. Let's go Manamorphose here. So let's go. Well, I guess I don't have the mana to cast Manamorphose this turn. So let's Witness back, I think, Sahili. Because I've already played a land, so I think the Saga is just going to be too slow. And then sack this for black. Cast Shieldred, and then Skull Clamp the Witness, and draw two cards and gain gain four life. Okay, Leo and Dark Ritual. All right, now I'm feeling pretty good about this. I could have witnessed back Lotus, but I didn't feel like I needed a Lotus given the, the circumstances. Slade can't draw seven here. You could minus three and Necromancy back some, or you can't Necromancy because that's not an instant or sorcery. You could minus three Jace to cast a card draw spell, but with a shield in play, that's not too appealing. Next turn, I get to cast Sahili and then cast Dark Ritual, make a token, cast Leovold. Though I might clamp first. Okay, we're Jacing Shieldred. I don't mind that. Grave Titan, oh, I don't mind that at all, really. That's not going to win the game. Okay. Memory Jar just basically wins the game here. Actually, just straight up does win the game with Sahili here. Uh, Tamio, that's interesting too. Mm -hmm. I could plus one Grist, but do I want to minus it to kill the Grave Titan? I don't think so. I think I just plus one Grist first. Mill Upheaval. So I could Tamio back Upheaval, but I don't have quite enough mana to do all that, right? Tamio back Upheaval. 
ritual. Oh, I guess I could upheaval. That wouldn't be crazy. <clears throat> but I feel like I can do better here. Because I could Tamiyo plus one look for Lotus, or sorry, Yogwill. Because the other thing is if I can, if I Tamiyo back Lotus and then Sahili, the Lotus, I get a lot of mana. Right now I have one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana, 11 mana without having played a land drop. Seven mana up, get Tamiyo. After seven, after Tamioing, I have seven upheaval. I have one floating. Replay a land. Can't replay. Oh, I guess I could just replay Shieldred. After going mana confluence, mana crypt. Is that good? I could also leave a black floating and go mana crypt, talisman. Leovold. I kind of like that actually. Let's go Tamio. Feels like that takes away a lot of uh, slades out here. Get back upheaval. Ritual. Upheaval. And, okay, <laughs> Mesmeric Fiend. All right, Mana Crypt, Talisman. Oh, I guess I could actually just play Grist instead. Is that better? I'm not gonna be able to play, I'm gonna play Sanctum. I'm not gonna be able to play Shieldred next turn, but I think that's okay. Basically, would I rather play Grist or Leovold this turn? I think, hmm. I actually think it's probably Grist. Mm -hmm. Then plus one, Mill Seed Shark. Pass the turn. I think I'm gonna discard Ancient Tomb. I'm pretty sure I'm not playing that. Island, Island. And one more. I don't really wanna discard Mana Confluence. I guess I could discard Forest. All right. And now Slade goes Creeping Tar Pit, discards six cards. It just feels like that was the safest play, given that I have so much more mana here. And then I can go like Tamiyo plus Skull Clamp this turn. Tamiyo probably getting back Black Lotus into hand or something like that. All right, well, the bad news this game was it took me a while to get anything going. The good news was... Slade's draw was not super fast. I mean, it was doing a lot of like jacing and thirsting and just like stuff and Reckoner Bank Bustering, which is all fine stuff to do. But if you don't have a counter spell for upheaval, all that stuff together really doesn't accomplish much. At some point also, I'm going to find Yogmoth's Will and then I go Yogwill, Ritual, Yogwill, Lotus, Ritual, Manamorphose. I don't have a storm card, but I just like cast five things and then you're dead. All right, well. Busted cards are, are busted, as it turns out. Let's see. Mana Crypt. I guess I am in some risk of Mana Crypt here, but I think with a Shieldred... Oh, that's nice, too. I'm not at that big of a risk. I still have Regrowth in my deck, so even if I mill Yogwill, I could still Regrowth later. Um, I actually do want to get Shieldred out ASAP here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take... Oh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to get Shieldred out this turn, I think. I guess I should have played a different land. I did, we switched points or switched plans here. Let's get back Black Lotus. All right, yeah, I'm glad I played a, a Tamiyo in my deck. <laughs> Tamiyo Lotus is pretty nice. All right, send for one. Basically, I should have just played the island so I wouldn't have pained off Tamiyo because I wasn't setting up casting Shieldred next turn. I was just casting it this turn. And then Slade can reanimate the Grave Titan, but in some form or fashion, I would imagine. But I also don't really care about that. I've got a Grist to kill it, leaving you with two zombies against my Shieldred. Also, Tamiyo plus one naming Yogmoth's Will doesn't really, can't really uh, miss. Like, I can miss as in I could not hit the Yog Will, but I'll always have Yog Will in my deck at that point, which means that I'm not going to end up 
getting completely screwed. All right, so now even if I take damage off Mana Crypt, I'm going to get to gain off Shieldred here. All right, I did lose the flip again. I do have to watch out a little bit for um, Creeping Tar Pit. Let's go plus one. Yog Moth's Will. Okay, we missed. We hit Preordain Island, Breeding Pool, Fast Spawn, sure. Um, you're at 15. Let's attack for six here. Unfortunately, I am in a spot where if Slade has a Mox, I could die to Creeping Tar Pit. But I think that's just how it is. I think I'll plus one the Grist. That's fine. I don't have enough creatures to... All right, didn't mill Yogg Will. And I think I play Leovold here. And I think I'm actually going to pain for Leovold here. Because I'm still just as dead to Mana Crypt or not, so I can play Restless Cottage. So if Slade has a Mox, I, can, I have a 50-50 to die off Mana Crypt after Tar Pit hits me. If not, I pretty much win on my next turn here. Because I get to attack with everything, and I mean, I guess you could have a removal spell or something, but it seems pretty unlikely. All right, let's draw. All right, I won the flip. That's not bad. Gain two more life. Uh, let's just start by attacking here and seeing what's up. I don't think I need to attack with Restless Cottage. Block Shield would go to one. Okay, that seems like a tough way to go about it. That's minus five Grist then. And you lose two life. Barring having something pretty good, you just die to that. And if something else is needed, then I guess I have the minus on Tamiya or the plus on Tamiya plus Skull Clamp. I, in fact, I can deterministically hit Yogwill this game, or this turn, by going uh, Skull Clamp plus Tamiya, that'll see my whole deck. All right. All right. A closer game one than I wanted, but uh, worked out. Playing against blue, black, splash, green, reanimator. Um, makes me want endurance against animate spells. I think that's a nice little freebie. I do kind of like all the cards I have. I guess on the draw, I could maybe cut one land. Which one do I want to cut, though? I think I should probably cut blue. I have a lot of green sources that turn into blue. Because I have 16. I mean, I do ha kind of have 20 mana sources. So there is that. But also this deck, I mean, that game aside, if I ever draw Ancestral or even Preordain, I have a lot of ways to chain into more card draw thanks to Regrowth, Witness, Tamiyo. You know, maybe Yogg will or whatever. I also have Memory Jar. Like, all right, this this looks pretty good to me though. Feels like this deck is absurdly busted. Mostly because it is. Mostly because it's just an obscenely good deck. There's actually a chance I should have main decked Endurance. It's also it's kind of nice having Exploration and Fast Bond means if I draw one, I can just pitch the other to Endurance, which is a nice little bit of value. But I also am really not going to want to Endurance myself all that often. So. Let's see what you can side in against Lotus Mana Crypt. Don't even know about the Ancestral. They don't even know I've got Ancestral Recall. <laughs> so we'll see how that ends up going. Crack a spinder. You have to stay hydrated when you're opening all this power. Very important. Okay. On the draw here. Op every opening seven with this deck is just a delight to look at. What do we got? This is a very keepable seven. Obviously, it's uh, got none of my big three cards in it. You know, Mana Crypt, Ancestral, Lotus. But turn one Sheldock, turn two Sakura Tribelder, turn three Leovold is a pretty nice play. And if I draw a land, I might even be able to preordain on three also. Okay. <laughs> Ancient Tomb Leovold. What a nice deck. Oh, nice. We can put Eternal Witness under the Sheldock. That's a nice little one to have kind of in the chamber here. Let's see, what's your two? All right, that one is pretty safe. 
for me, I would say. Ooh, nice. So because of Swamp, that means I can get Island off Sakura Tribelder and then go Leovold plus Preordain next turn. Set up Memory Jar, Tamiyo. Le Leovold Memory Jar still isn't really a combo because you don't... They're already getting very little usage out of those seven cards, so that's not that good. But it's still pretty nice to... To have uh, Leovold. Okay, land. Leo. Crack Misty. I know they don't have Mana Drain because my teammate does. I kind of feel like they're just going to get a tap land and use Bank Buster, but oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Or cast Thirst. That makes sense. Yeah, sure. Preordaining into Endurance would be kind of nice. Oh, no, never mind. They didn't draw. <laughs> I thought they were going to discard a big creature. That would make me more likely to want to do that. Oh, do we have like a Force of Will? Okay, Preordain. Grist, Manamorphose. Don't. Hmm. Do I care about. Do I want either of these six mana next turn? I have eight mana if I want it. I kind of feel like I actually don't want either of these. Oh, I like that. Okay. Let's see if we can set up a nice little mind twist here. Or actually, a nice big mind twist here. Razor Verge Thicket, sure. You can't use Bank Buster this turn. Maelstrom Pulse the Leovold and I draw a card. Yeah, I, I will take it. And then I'm going to mind twist you for four here. A normal land works, but I guess Ancient Tomb will have to do. And yeah, I can play around days by doing that. Mind Twist you for four. Or is this the time for Force of Will? Who knows? Oh, that's it. <laughs> Slade, Slade, Slade gives up easily is my... <laughs> Uh, it has been my uh, experience, and there we go. 1-0. Oh. I'll, I'll be disappointed if I could do less than a 3-0 -oh here. Alrighty, time for round two, playing against <clears throat> the one and only. Well, I wouldn't say one and only, because there's two LSVs, both in this match. Playing against Luis Salvato, who's on Mono Red. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to keep this hand. I really would like to draw a land on turn two. If I did, then I would get to play a Leovold or a Seed Shark. If I brick on lands, things could be ugly. Roberto, okay, well, at least I have fewer cards. Well, <laughs> could be worse. I guess I'll put a regrowth under the Shell Dock, pass the turn. Now, if I draw a black land, I can just play a Le uh, Sh Leovold, uh, Shieldred. So this kind of sounds kind of similar, actually. And that would be decent. Unless Salvato can play two cards here, I'm going to get to... Oh, he's going to Chain Lightning me, and then so he can hit with the Robber. Oh, Bolt me. All right. Exiled Eternal Witness. Well, at least I didn't draw Eternal Witness. Okay, land. Mm, I think I play Leovold. Because I don't have any non-creature spells. This blocks both of those creatures, and then... He does get to attack with Robber. I block Robber, then he can Eternal Witness back the Bolt, I guess. I think that's fine. Okay, and I go to 8, and then if he kills Leovold, I get to draw a card at least. He might just Bolt me, unfortunately. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised, but that's still fine. He traded the Robber for a Witness and got a Bolt back. I guess if he bolts me, I still get to draw. All right, draw. Dead Yogmoth's will, huh? Uh, let's play the Seed Shark. Pass the turn. This this draw has not really worked out. If the Shell Dock was a normal land, I would be feel pretty good about this. But oh, <laughs> Splinter Twin Eternal Witness. There we go. All right, I need to draw. If I draw a land and can upheaval, that actually wouldn't be too bad. I guess it would stop the, the witness. All right. Block. Go to six. 
and then probably just get bolted down to three at some point here. I don't think he's going to care about killing my seed. No, he's killing the seed shark. All right. Land? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Upheaval, fast bond. I'm just going to play lands down to one here, I think. I'm already dead, dead to bolt. I'll uh, put a preordain under it. I think that's better than putting grist. Two, one. All right. Pass the turn. And am I dead? We'll find out. <laughs> no. Oh, I didn't play the mocks. Interesting. I need to draw a black source so I can cast Shieldred. 24 cards left. All right, let's go witness. And I think I just witnessed back. I guess it's Seed Shark. I don't know. None of the, those plays are very good. Fastbone's dangerous now. I can uh, it can let me play another land and just immediately die. <laughs> oh man, I really need to draw a black source or a relevant spell. I haven't done a very good job of that so far. Because if I drew a black source, I could also attack with Restless Cottage and make a food, and then I would probably win. He's probably just going to play a, a burn spell at some point here, I would imagine. Chandra. Hellrider, yeah, that does it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, that'll that'll happen. All right, Virtue and Endurance are decent. The only problem I have with Virtue is it's black, and this deck does not have a lot of black sources. I kind of want to cut Tamiyo for Endurance. I think Endurance is going to be a better better way to go about it. I really don't like Ancient Tomb. I think maybe I'll just put in a Swamp instead of Ancient Tomb. And then maybe if I can fit a Virtue of Persistence in as well, I think I'm going to cut Upheaval. It's just not very good against those kinds of decks. His deck's so low curve, I don't think it's going to be very useful to have upheaval. All right. I think I like this. I could also put in City of Traitors if I wanted, but I don't think so. And I'll keep the Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt is still good enough. All right. Let's go ahead and be on the play again. Yeah, I, I will keep this hand. Huh. I mean, this is kind of, I guess how this deck loses is I kept two two landers. Let's see, the last one needed to draw an untapped land. It also turned out his hand had a mox in it. Like, had he not had mox, I could have probably sufficed with Sheldock being my first draw and then getting to play cards a turn later. The fact that he had a mox made it pretty difficult. Here, let's see, GRC, sure, all right. Forest would be really nice. Another swamp, huh? All right. I'm still going to get to play a turn three Seed Shark now. And then if it lives, I can go Dark Ritual Memory Jar. So I guess that is acceptable. Also, you know, if I don't draw Lotus, Mana Crypt, Ancestral, early any of these games, it's going to be diff more difficult. Metamorphose mocking me here. All right. Seed Shark, and I actually don't think I'm going to block the Dragon's Rage Channeler. If he even attacks, it's not clear to me if he's going to. Uh, Xander's Lounge, interesting. I wonder what blue or black card he's got lurking over there. Okay, no blocks. I would like, I just need this thing to live one turn, and, and walking into Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning doesn't seem very good. Oh, he's got Pestermite type cards. Deceiver Exarch. Yep. Okay. I guess I would like to draw a land then. <laughs> uh, well, damn. Not going 3 0 with this deck is a shame, but just two hands. I guess I could have mulliganed. I just don't think I'm supposed to. He's going to twin me. No, Vortex. Okay. Vortex is something. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Do I have to block now? I think I'm just going to take one. I really don't like it, but I just need the Seed Shark to do something here, and then I can start blocking with it. 
All right, ready to draw another green card. <laughs> Let's see if I can if I can hit here. If I draw a forest, I can go ritual jar fast bond. Oh, that's well, that's a card. All right. That was a card. So let's go Lotus. Now I think I do jar this turn actually. Land, let's see. Ritual. Sack this for green. Manamorphos. Let's add green blue, I guess. Oh, okay. I could Yog Will, but it doesn't really net me much. So let's go Fast Bond, Jar, leaving a green floating, I think. And I think I am going to crack the Jar here. Mind Twist doesn't do much for me. But I think Skull Clamp could be decent. Take play a land, take one. And I think I'll take one more, go to 13, cast Endurance on you. And then equip the Seed Shark. And I don't think I'm gonna play the extra land. And I think I do pass because he had twin in hand and he didn't go for it <laughs> amazing i don't think that was necessarily wrong or anything but it worked out pretty well for me okay so now what i just have to dodge is a bunch of burn spells he could have thunder maw the funny thing is you can actually block the thunder maw with endurance you don't usually get to block thunder maw hellkite i will block dragon's rage channeler with chrome host seed shark i think because i don't need to make more seed shark tokens and getting two cards is pretty nice. Is this Zealous Conscripts? Okay. Mm, okay, how does this work? Uh, right now he's at 17, he's effectively at 15, and I have three, six, 11. Hold on, if I animate, if I animate three tokens, that's eight, 14, but if I play Yogwell, that costs three, gets me back three, but gets plus two, plus three. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can uh, if I can win on my turn. I'm assuming he doesn't have Fire Blast. Let me just see. Let's see. Okay, Eomatic has Fire Blast, so we don't die here. Because if we take nine, go to four, then go to two off Vortex, I block the Deceiver. Next turn, I attack back for six, 11, 13. And, but if I do that, then I'm hoping, the problem with that, I don't quite have lethal. I can Dark Ritual, so let's say I have six mana. Yago go to three, land go to four. Ritual go to six, Lotus go to nine mana. Given that I, I could, what I could, oh, hold on, hold on. I, actually, I think I actually have enough. Hold on. Let's see. I block Deceiver. I take nine, go to four. Vortex, go to two. Attack back for 11, five, 11, put you to six, plus those four, put you to two. You die to Vortex, and I get to mind twist you, so you die to Vortex. Okay. I think that works out. Okay, go to two. Botanical Sanctum doesn't do anything. Yog will. Land. Lotus. Dark Ritual. And I need, so that's three, six, 11, 13. I need, to, I need eight mana to animate. And that's three, six, eight. Oh, but I don't have quite enough to mind twist as well, right? Let's cast Manamorphose. 
Blue, blue. Do I want black? No, I don't need black, I don't think. So what I could do then is mind twist for three, and then I could animate. Oh no, I have to I have to finish it this turn. So I guess I just have to do it that way. Animate this, animate, oh man, hold on. This one's newly controlled, this one's not. It's 5, 11, 13. Yeah, I guess I just animate and go for it. I guess I was slightly short on mana. I could also memory jar, but I don't think that does anything for me. All right. Animate, animate. Animate. Oh, I animated the wrong one. Damn. Uh, so this is 10, 14. Yeah, I'm one short. All right. Well, in that case, I guess I clamp this one, draw two, and lose. Damn. I think I probably was going to die to a bolt anyway. But obviously doing that didn't work out. Put you to four, untap, go. And he would just bolt me in response here, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, he had the bolt. Okay. It didn't matter. I appreciate Luis showing me the bolt. And uh, unfortunately, that does mean we're one and one here. Yeah, I could have blocked the Dragon's Rage instead of the Exarch, been at two more life and still died to the bolt. I guess I could have then gone for a mind twist win. I think it would have been better to block the Exarch. I actually ended up being, or the Dragon's Raid, I ended up being a little bit short. And, uh, or I guess the Zealous Conscripts also would have been fine. All right, well, let's try to win our last round. That was a tricky game and certainly didn't play it perfectly, but if we go 2-1, that'll still be good. Alrighty, it's time for round three. Can try to redeem ourselves. Playing against Esper Control. I'm gonna keep this hand. Really will need to find Ancestral against this deck. My opponent's deck here, I actually have a screenshot of of the graveyard. Like this is this is what he played against my opponent. Stern Scolding, Spell Pierce, Remand, Mana Lake, Memory Lapse, and Jace. So it's that's a lot of stuff. Uh Tamio's not bad. I'm gonna play Preordain. If I get spell pierced, I get spell pierced. I like Ancestral. Hmm. Yeah, I don't mind Ancient Tomb, actually. Actually, yeah, I'll put them both on top. I actually should have put it the other order because of discard spells. But next turn, I'm probably going to be running out Restless Cottage and Passing. We'll see what Senor Terabad has. Suspicious Stowaway, that's interesting. It's kind of awkward because I don't really want to flip it, but if I Ancestral, let's see. Mm. If I Ancestral and play a land, I'll have to discard two cards. Yeah, that's worse. All right. Guess I'll just have to let this thing flip. And I kind of think Ancestral might get a... Uh, countered here. I don't mind that too much because I can just play Tamio next turn. So we'll see what Carl's got for me. Oh my god, Orcish Bowmasters? I didn't know about that one. Did I miss them saying that? <sighs> All right. Um, it's not good for me. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I missed it here. In any case, Bowmaster wasn't great. Don't like it, but I haven't lost yet. Let's go Eternal Witness. 
and I'll get back Ancestral. I, I know that against Bowmasters that's a bit rough, but I don't really have a better play here. I'm going to discard this Ancient Tomb. This, the way this game has gone, this I think Ancient Tomb is not going to be of much use. And I think I'll discard a Swamp. Okay. I mean, now I'm basically dead because Terabad here has Memory Lapse and Remand and Daze and Spell Pierce, just like a million counter spells, and has effectively, you know, every single threat you need to win the game in play. Damn, one twoing with uh, Lotus Ancestral Mana Crypt's brutal, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I guess if I draw Lotus, I could set up something here. We'll have to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully my teammates are winning, but I still would like to win myself. Well, let's find out. What is this, like a Jace maybe? It could be, uh, could be that somehow Carl's hasn't drawn a lot of counters. I guess. Walking Ballista for two. Ping Witness. Attack for seven. Okay. I'm at seven. Effectively six. All right. All right. I mean, if I don't draw anything, I'm going to Ancestral go to three. Yeah, I'll just go to three. That's fine. Or four, I guess. Well, three with the Ballista out. Oh, man. Fast Bond. Now being down this much life is really brutal. All right, so Ritual, Fast Bond, uh, I don't really have enough to play to do much with Fast Bond, so I'm going to Manamorphose, I'll add Blue-Green, I need to find Black Lotus. Basically, if I found Black Lotus there, oops, don't want to go through there. Uh, I could, I could potentially win by going Yogwill, Ritual Upheaval. Does Tamio plusing to find Lotus work? I mean, I guess it might. All right, plus one. Black Lotus. All right, missed, missed on Lotus. All right. Whew. A bunch of counter spells and Orcish Bowmasters. That is rough. Well, I do want Virtue of Persistence. I think I will once again swap out Ancient Tomb for Swamp. And then I don't know that I want Endurance. Do I want Brazen Bar or Shield Resedict? None of those seem super exciting. I like the rest of my cards. All right. I'll try this again, I guess. And hope hope that we don't get bowmastered. Well, this this deck I'm playing against is like the worst matchup I could think of. A bunch of counter spells and orcish bowmasters against my like Sultai card draw deck <laughs> that that counter spells are very good against and bowmasters is all nearly unbeatable. So that is how, I mean, if I'm going to lose twice with this deck, going 1-2 against Mono Red and, like, Esper Anti-Control or whatever is very good. Like, that is the sort of thing that can happen. And that being said, this deck, I could just get some draws where I have Mana Crypt or Lotus in my opener, which didn't happen against the red deck. That's how you can mostly get that. In fact, I don't think I cast any of these three cards against Salvato, except Lotus, the one game where I drew it many turns too late, so... These cards are great and all, but if you don't draw them, they don't do much. And uh, drawing Ancestral against Orcish Bowmasters was quite the beat. Turns out I could I uh, I guess I could have main phased it, but it just seemed so bad to do that. All right. Well, my teammates are winning, so we might still win this draft. And you know, sometimes you open some great cards and it doesn't turn out well for you. That is that is what it is. I would like to have one really nice draw though, like. Like, even my first game against Slade, which I ended up winning, where I had, like, Lotus Mana Crypt and opener and then did nothing for five turns. Like, I feel like this deck has so much potential. Just setting aside winning or, uh, you know, winning or losing, I would like to see this deck kind of do its thing. And I feel like I haven't had any, like, really sick, like, fast bond Lotus, 
ManaCrypt type draws. But maybe that'll change. That all changes here. That all... Yeah, I mean, I'll keep this hand. Like, I do need to draw a blue source for this hand to do something, but I just don't think this is a good hand to mulligan. One blue source and I get to cast Ancestral and Leovold. I could ritual out Memory Jar, though. That's pretty dicey against counters, so I probably won't do that against Island Go here. Oh, what is this? A oh, Ballista for one. All right. All right. Blue source. No, but Sakura Tribelder is actually pretty nice. Pass the turn. Okay, that... Better late than never. Okay. Tinker. Okay, it's so a Blightsteel. Yeah, Blightsteel is going to be rough. Let's see, what do I have to answer Blightsteel? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, well, there we go. There we go. I guess we'll draw. I could Leovold and Chump. That just seems horrible. I'm just going to Ancestral, Ritual, play Breeding Pool, pay two life, play Jar, Crack Jar, and to draw Fast Bond, Lotus draws. There's Lotus. Uh, I'm trying to build up to like an upheaval, I guess. It seems pretty impossible, but we'll see. Let's go Mana Morphos. I'm going to get green, black. Preordain, I guess, looking for... Oh, there's Fast Bond, which at this point doesn't do much for me. Chrome Host Seed Shark also doesn't do much for me. Uh, I think I'm going to put this in the bottom, hope to draw Yogg will. No. I mean, I could regrowth Lotus. Uh, does that do anything? No, not really. I guess I'll regrowth. I mean, I guess I regrowth Lotus and then play Shieldred. And then pass the turn, our jar hands go away. I chump the the blight steel and then oh I goggle my hand. I'm, I'm such an idiot, but not much I could do there either. I assume I'm dead here. I mean there's just I don't really have an answer in my deck to that. Alright. A shameful one and two, but these matchups were bad, and honestly, like, th that turn was kind of nice, but it was just way too late against Blightsteel, so there we are. All right, well, one and two, uh, looks like we're either going to tie or win, so I guess I'll, I'll I'll take that as some grim solace, but turns out I needed to, I just needed to open another piece of power. Oh, wait, I opened three pieces of power. Yeah. What can you do? Sometimes uh, Black Lotus, Mana Crypt, Ancestral aren't quite enough, and uh, you know what? That's all right. I like this deck. I thought it was good. I think it is good, and uh, it turned out my busted draws never really materialized, though it certainly had the capability to, and played against a very fast red deck and a really hateful blue deck that also just turned three tinkered for Blightsteel, which this deck just can't answer, which some of the times that happens. I guess there's Brazen Bar where I could have boarded it in. In any case, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow we'll open four pieces of power. Actually, I did even open four pieces because I passed all out of a mox. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll do better. There's always another draft, and uh, I can't promise more power, but I can certainly go aim for more wins. Could do a little better than one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>